Hello everybody, Marty Off Grid Gecko here. Um, I've got a day off, so I'm gonna have lots of fun, and it's gonna start real, real early. It's about I don't know what time it is, like six, six thirty. Just crawled out of bed, got the cats fed, but um, we got some rain finally. So my water tank out by the pole barn are filled up. And I'm going to be transferring water over to these tanks. And I'll apologize ahead of time. Because there's going to be like probably some flashlight footage. But i got to get started on this early. So I can make my supply run to town. And we're going to be doing some other stuff today too. So I may do a couple videos today actually. Um, yeah, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is... So basically, like I've said before, the water tanks are out by the pole barn. And I've got two... Um, 275 gallon totes 265 or whatever they are I just call them 250 um so those are both filled up by now because we got a hell of a rainstorm last night and i've got two similar tanks here by the house and one of them is near empty so what we're gonna do is pump water from over there to the house now i've got a manual pump that I can use my drill for but I prefer to use the house pump so I'll show you how the outside stuff set up where I can transfer water in and out why are you so playful um and these little cats are probably gonna be running around because they're kind of eager to get out and see what outside looks like after it rains and they're gonna go splashing puddles and stuff and make a mess um yeah all right let's get on it all right, so this is the basic setup that we're working with here. Um, two tanks right here next to the house, and there's my little propane tank for the water heater back there behind them. Each one of these tanks has a valve built into it, integral to it, and then there's a two inch pipe connecting them and a line running into the in hole on the house, which is here. Ugh. And then this is the out hole, and this is the overflow. So if for some reason the pressure inside builds up to a dangerous level, water's going to come shooting out of here and hopefully keep things inside the house from exploding. That's kind of its purpose. I don't know if it'll work or not. Never been, never had that problem yet, and I shouldn't really have that problem. Um, so what we're going to do first is this tank. Ugh. You can maybe see there is getting dangerously low. It's actually still probably got enough in there for a shower, but um, yeah, the other tank's pretty much full. So I'm not dangerously low on water by the house. I could switch to the other tank and use it for a while, but with as cold as it is, it's a pain in the butt because um, this one I don't have to drain until it gets down into like the 20s. I don't have to really shut it down. The other tank over there, if it's freezing, I don't want freezing water in that two inch pipe. That's just too much surface area exposed to cold weather. So um, basically I use as much water as I need to use for the night and then shut it down, drain that line. And there's another little valve way there at the back that I can drain the line to empty it. And I've got a valve inside the house that I can shut off to just basically disconnect the outside water supply from the inside of the house. Turn off the pump. Whatever. But anyways, this goes through here, passes through a filter, and then it goes into the pump. And the pump goes into a tank, and then from the tank it goes to the rest of the house. Um, and it's a pressure tank inside, not really a, a holding tank, so it only holds a few gallons. Um... And then, of course, the spigot comes out of it. So what we're going to do is trick the system, okay? So I've got a hose running from the spigot. I've got a cat crawling up my leg. And we're going to put that hose into the top of the tank here. Move. <clears throat> now, this is a Studer valve. And when I bought these, I was actually intending to use them for something entirely different. But what it does is it's got a little... Come on. It's got a little flappy valve inside of it. And basically air can come up and get in, but nothing can so that it can or it can vent. So it basically just provides a little ventilation for the the system. 
so that these things don't create like a dry suction or some crazy business like that. Um, they're actually designed as a trap to ventilate out. So how that works in this scenario, I don't know, but I was just out here one day and I realized this would work for this. Screwed it in nice and loose and that basically keeps the bugs out of the water and it doesn't create pressure in the tank by having this completely sealed off like that one. Um, so I just move the valve over wherever it needs to be. Now we're going to take the other end of this hose. If I can find it. Do, 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 Hose. And I've still got a bunch of soda cans because I haven't rebuilt the kiln yet. So as soon as I get the kiln rebuilt, we'll get rid of all these soda cans and melt them down and turn them into fun stuff. But, uh, pop that hose in there. And then we're ready to go on this end. Now the only other thing we need to do is disconnect the speed coming into the house. Um, and I gotta go in the house for something real quick. Okay, so there's a little valve back here in the back. Um, I've already shut it off. I don't know if you can even see it. Let me try zooming rather than sticking my hand back there because um, it's a little crazy, but that's the valve. Comes in from the wall outside. Then water passes around behind this tank and feeds to this water filter and then it goes to the pump and then from the pump it goes to pressurize the tank and also the whole water system for the house and there's the main shutoff for the house water so I'm going to close that for a moment just to keep that line from draining out because I don't want air bubbles and then we'll go outside it's also a good idea to turn the pump off um, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be brave um, and water won't drain out past a certain point either. This thing attached over here to the filter is a one-way valve known as a float or there's a couple names for them. Um, and what that does is it keeps this line on this side from getting air bubbles in it because stuff can only go through one direction. But if you get air going through it, then you'll get air and bubbles in the system and that just screws everything up. Uh, so for the moment, that's all we're going to do, and then we're going to go hook up a different water line to this inlet. Back outside here, so now, simple little procedure. I just disconnect this line, if I can. Hopefully it's not frozen, and this is kind of hard to do one-handed. Alright. And I should probably turn this off too, even though it's just going to drain back. So it's not a big deal today. But uh, if I'm filling the other tank or something, uh, I normally close that. Um, in this case, the water's just going to go right back through down into the tank, so it really doesn't matter. And it probably already has, actually. So open that up. And I just set it off here to the side. And then we're ready. So we need to run a hose from over there all the way back over here and straight over the experimental garden and i have a hose just special for that so i'm gonna go ahead and run that line and then i'll turn the camera back on it's very wet out here so i had to change my hoses i forgot the gray one doesn't reach over here but i got the red one run into this tank and both of these tanks are filled up now these catch water off the top of the pole barn goes down this gutter here into this little plumbing network and then boom 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 and it fills up these tanks so this is tank number one this is tank number two this one always fills up first don't ask why um so then what we're going to do is turn this on and i've got the other end of this hose loose Ugh. and i hear water so that's a good thing there's nothing frozen in there blocking it because that's always bad so the hose is running up over the garden and straight through because if it's not a straight line it won't reach all the way by itself and what is happening is gravity is pushing the water from there over to here and I don't know if you heard that little pss pss, but that's air being let out of the hose right here and you see how it's draining uh, I don't tighten it all the way at first because I want it to get all the air out of the line so this kind of ensures that 
I guess I could have tightened it a little more than what I did though, because this is being a pain. So set this down real quick. Alrighty. And there we go. So all that's left now is to open up that valve and then we'll come back out and we'll turn this line on. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. Okay, the valve's on and I'm freezing my nubs and we got the gray line running into here, or the valve's open rather. So I'm gonna turn this on. Yeah, it's just a matter of turning a knob at this point. The pump will kick on momentarily. And what it's gonna do is start sucking water out of that tank over there. Why is not focusing? And then it's gonna pull it into this tank right here, or into the pump. The pump's gonna turn on. There it goes. And now the pump is officially pulling water from that tank to the house system, and then this is filling. So there's just one last step that we need to do. We're gonna be putting about 200 gallons in here. So I need some um, water purifier. Mm. Ah, move. Okay, I don't know the that noise in the background. I went ahead and kicked on the generator too Just because in case you didn't notice it's cloudy outside today, and we're not gonna have any luck Get enough solar energy to run this sucker, but anyways um, Basically the strategy that I use is 200 milliliter or 1 milliliter per gallon, okay, so we are using Household bleach, unscented, normal, nothing special about it, um, and one milliliter per gallon. Now, rainwater itself is pretty pure, so I don't have to worry about most things. It's slightly acidic because of nitrates that come down with the rain, and this is not an exact science, but this is basically what we do. I use the same thing for my drinking water, except I have to pull it out with a syringe because I do those in five gallon buckets. Um, and that's it. So we're gonna add this to the tank outside and we should be good to go, man. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this with as little, um, as little craziness as possible on doing all this with one hand. I don't have the camera mounted because I'm freaking lazy. But basically I need to pull this guy back a little bit and make some room. And then we're gonna take this guy and pour him in here. And just go straight into the tank. Again, nothing special. Um, I probably will, and then I'm gonna rinse this out, basically. So that we can get all those chlorides in there. Now, that's gonna chlorinate my water, and that's gonna kill any residual pests and stop mold from growing, and, or um, algae from growing, and that kind of nonsense. Um, even though, not really necessary, I guess, but you know clean drinking water and shit. But that's it, that's the whole gig. Now the rest of it is just sitting around and waiting for this joker to fill up at the flow rate of the pump, which is not all that great. It's a half horsepower pump and I'm sucking water through a teeny tiny little hose and I'm running it way from over there. So yeah, it's gonna take a minute. But uh, I'm gonna have me another Dr. Pepper add to my wonderful pile of soda cans here that will eventually get recycled and uh yeah get on about my business for the morning the sun's coming up Ugh. you can't see it but it's up there somewhere and this is the morning on the homestead and i think my chimney's making smoke oh yeah looks like that log's finally burning that's good i like burning logs burning logs is fun so anyways, yep, that's it. Wait for this joker to fill up. This one I'm not gonna worry about. It's a reserve tank, basically. This is my active. And uh, we're supposed to be getting more rain today. So if we get two inches, two inches, we'll fill that little joker over there right back up. Maybe two and a half. I don't remember the exact calculation. And uh, we'll be good to go again. We'll have plenty of water to get us through the next couple months. So it doesn't take a lot of rain. It just takes one roof. And now eventually, 
I should probably put gutters up here and just have them direct feed into a tank down here, but you know, that'll happen when it happens, I guess. Um, till next time, if you like this kind of thing, go ahead and click like, subscribe, and I'll show you more of the little quirks of my weird, crazy off-grid life. Um, see you later.